Hi, it's Rachel here from Offroad CC and this week's bike review is of the Trek Remedy 7. So the Remedy is a long travel trail bike that sets a great standard for this category of bike. It's reasonably well priced and it's a nimble bike that enjoys more trail orientated rides which sets it apart from the brand's Enduro Ready bike, the Slash. The Remedy we tested is the bottom of the range Remedy 7 which comes in at £2,200. It's not the cheapest long legged trail bike you'll find but it is getting there if you eliminate those direct buy brands. So for your money, you get an alloy frame with internal cable routing, there's adjustable geometry, and it uses Trek's still excellent rear suspension, no longer, despite it no longer sporting the full floater link. The frame also features Trek's knock block system. So this system stops the bars turning far enough that the fork crown hits the frame. It's something they needed to prevent after altering the design of the bike to incorporate a straighter down tube in conjunction with an altered rear suspension design. They say this provides a 5% stiffer frame and the ability to run a metric shock. The knock block is unnoticeable when you're riding, but if you try to manhandle the bike in and out of a car or through tight spaces, you'll soon know about it. And if you want to run a stem of your choice, or one that's shorter than the 50mm Bonchager one, which is as short as that stem comes, then you'll need to fit a Trek knock block headset lock ring spacer <laughs> to lock the steerer tube to the headset bearing cover and the frame. Then you can fit regular spacers and your own stem above it. So whilst I'm talking about the frame, we should also talk about the Mino link, which is the adjustable geometry. It's a reversible chip at the connecting junction of the seat stays and the rocker link, which allows the head tube angle to be steepened by half a degree and the bottom bracket to be raised by 10 mil. I set the bike in the low position and left it with a 66 degree head angle and a 74.7 .7 degree seat angle. And I should think that most riders will largely do the same or one or the other, and I'm yet to meet anyone that regularly flips a chip on a regular basis. That said, if you are putting in the miles, then the option is there to steepen the effective steep angle, raise a BB, and make life a little bit easier and more efficient when you're climbing. So the Remedy has 150 mil travel at the rear, which is dealt with by RockShox Deluxe RL Shock, and up front, the fork fitted is a RockShox Yari RC with 160 mil travel. It's a good choice of fork, I think, and compare this to an entry-level specialised stump jumper, which is similar travel, comes in at £2,700, or a mid-range giant trance, which is £2,500, and there you'll get Fox 34 rhythms, which are ultimately less stiff than these Yaris and not as easy to upgrade. So for about 200 quid, you can change the internals of this fork, and it will essentially provide you with the impressive performance of a Lyric. Elsewhere on the bike, there's a SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain, which is connected to the bike by a press fit bottom bracket, and disappointingly underpowered SRAM Level T brakes. The wheels are Bontrager's own 30mm internal width, um, which means the 2.6 Bontrager XR4 tyres sit really nicely on them and actually come up pretty large. But if you are the type of rider to regularly roll tyres, then you might find the sidewalls of these a little bit flimsy and lacking support. To ride, the Remedy is a lively and nimble ride. It's incredibly fun and it's a hoot to hop and jump all over trail obstacles. In fact, I think the Remedy would be disappointed if you didn't. Trek's active braking pivot system is a great addition. It's immediately noticeable under braking. The bike is more composed when slowing and provides loads more grip. ABP is a suspension design where Trek position the pivot on the rear triangle at the rear axle which allows the suspension to work better when braking, as the rear wheel can track the, track the ground better, which therefore increases that grip. And the suspension, although sensitive when descending, I found the deluxe shock a little overdamped. Now, this is nothing new, and it's certainly not Trek Remedy specific. I've mentioned it on numerous test bikes this year and last. I'd like to be able to speed up the shock touch and really make the most of the bike's poppy, playful nature, but this is the shock that it comes with. Geometry rise, the Remedy can't be considered long. Its reach of 435mm in the low position puts it in the category of shorter trail bikes. And it's not the most capable of going fast or the single track gets rough, but it is competent in most trail situations and will see you through gnarly terrain in a pretty composed way. 
The head angle is plenty slack enough for the purpose and the chainstays of 435mm suit this medium sized bike well. I would be keen to see how a lower bottom bracket, so lower than 439mm and a longer wheelbase change the stability of the bike for the better, but then it probably wouldn't ride like a remedy and I really like sliding the bike around and jumping over most things in my path whether they required it or not. So perhaps in this case, it's best left the way that it is. The other, only other thing in the geometry that wasn't quite to my taste is the head tube is pretty short. It's 105 mil. And you might find that the best way to set up this bike is with plenty of spaces underneath the stem in order to weight the front of the bike more efficiently and prevent that front from feeling super low. True to form for trail bike, the Remedy climbs well too, mostly due to that good suspension platform and a relatively light build, even considering that hefty SRAM NX gear. The bike moves easily over bumps and undulations in the trail and whilst it doesn't bob too much either when pedalling. In summary, the Remedy 7 is a classic long travel trail bike. This niche of bikes is proving ever popular and this is a great example. The bike might not be the slackest or the longest out there, but it is super fun and will evoke a smile on every trail ride, I'm sure of it. Ride one and if it suits you and suits the trails that you ride and it makes you laugh, then it'll be a good buy. So to read our full review, you can head over to www.off.road.cc now. And thanks very much for watching.